This is the lab on torque and center of mass. So in the motivation, I wrote that we have to pay attention to torques because rotating parts in machines, of course, have torques working on them, making them faster or slower. Sometimes they have to be balanced so that they rotate at a constant speed. So anyway, that's the motivation behind this one here. And it's, uh, there was quite a bit of stuff here. Center of mass is related to that. So when the torques are in balance, then the center of mass is balanced. So that's the rest of the motivation. All right, so let's see. Here's the theory part. Torque, that's this letter tau here, is the lever arm times the force. I'm not using L for lever arm. I'm using R instead because the L looks just like a vertical line and looks like a one or an I or what have you. So I'm losing, using an R for lever arm. Lever arm times force is torque. All right, this one here is the center of mass equation. Looks a little complicated, but I will show you that quite soon on a calculator on how to handle that. All right, so let's see. We're not going to do this particular one here, the second class lever. You can see there is a lever here. I'm holding it here with a certain amount of torque upwards. You see the lever arm here, and then there's a weight here. So the two torques, the weight pulling down and me pulling up here, they have to equal out in order to be in equilibrium. But as I said, we're not going to do this part. So I'm going to skip over the next page here or so. I'm going to do this one here as an example quite soon. This one and the next one, these two here. All right, and then we're going to get to the mobile. Now, usually we do be a build a mobile. In this case, I actually did it in reverse. I will explain that later what I mean by that. So here on the typical mobile, we have these rods hanging here, and then we have different objects here with different masses, and we would have to figure out what are the lever arms and what are the torques that produce in order to stay balanced, and then the center of mass needs to coincide with the fulcrum, fulcrum or pivot point. And I will come across it as well in my calculation examples. So here's my typical example, and you can look through this one. I'm not going to repeat this. I'm going to do another one here soon. And what we're looking for is that as we have objects hanging on something here, I know it says teddy bear toy car and then the drawing a moment ago, you actually saw a polar bear and a walrus or something like that. In any case, so you have this mobile here and the torques equal out between everything and the rod actually at the hanging one has mass that it might not be negligible and it might be off center so it also adds a torque and then at the end we come up with a torque that is relatively close to zero. The unit for torque is the newton meter just like it is in the American system where it's the foot pound. Then the center of mass comes out to 0, 0.0 centimeter meaning it coincides with the pivot point so 0 0.03 or negative 0 0.03 here ought to be 0, 0.0 but that's really close for concern considering that this is a measurement of course and for a measurement that is really close to 0, 0.0 centimeter the negative in this case actually has no meaning that just means that my little error here is to the left instead of the of the pivot point instead of the right. So it, that really doesn't matter in this case. All right. So here, what I did as sample, and you will see it in the video, is actually I used rods and I put weights on them. So I did a mobile in reverse. You will see that when when you watch the video. And then I figured I'm not going to use the English words for them. So instead of calling it an injured football smurf that I put on there. I call it a verletzter Fußballschlumpf. Instead of calling it Papa Smurf, there is a Great Smurf, Großer Schlumpf on there, Sled Smurf, Schlitten Schlumpf, and Swim Smurf, Badeschlumpf. And then what I did is I already put all the measurements in here that you will see in the videos. I still recommend that you watch the videos, and I'm thinking I inserted these numbers to the best of my abilities without making a mistake. I hope I didn't, otherwise just fix them from the video. And then this one here would be the top segment where everything is assembled. And again, you will see that in the videos. All right, let's skip this one here. That's just a little bit too much 
if you're not in the classroom with me. No conclusion, of course. Here at Denim, this is, I'm going to go back to this one here in just a moment and show you the example calculation for these two scenarios. I'm going to take just a little break. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So I'm going to go up here to where I want to calculate the example. Let's see. It's this one here indeed. So we got a meter stick here. In fact, a little bit is off the picture here. The meter stick is centered here at, at, 50, at its 50 centimeter right on the fulcrum. And then we have a weight here relatively close to the fulcrum. And you can see it's a relatively large weight. And here we have a smaller weight further away from, from the fulcrum of a longer lever arm. And that makes sense. Long lever arm times small mass times gravity, which is the torque then, that ought to be equal then to large mass times small lever arm times gravity being the same kind of torque so that the whole thing is balanced. And again, this is a special case because the rod is centered here. And this here being the fulcrum, we're not considering that to be the 50 centimeter mark. We consider it to be the zero centimeter mark, which is what you see right here. So the meter stick adds zero torque to it. If I take the two weights off, the meter stick is still balanced. That will not happen throughout the other experiments where the rod actually does add a torque to it. This one here just happens to have a zero torque. All right, let's look at the numbers. On the right-hand side, I got 516 grams. This one here is a 500 gram mass, but then there is this holder here, which adds 16 grams to it. And then over here, it's 200 grams plus the holder of 16, so 216. One of the things we can see is when we compare these two numbers here, that this one is roughly two and a half times the other one. Well, when we look at the lever arms, then obviously this one here must be two and a half times that one. And I think we can see that roughly, all right? Also, I put some negatives here. The negative here means that this one here is pulling on the left, and therefore I call it a negative lever arm, and this one here is pulling on the right, and I call it a positive lever arm. And because these two torques that I get, one of them needs to be positive, the other one needs to be negative when I add them so that they come up with something relatively close to zero. Okay, when I do the example calculations, I always start with the center of mass, which ought to come up with zero to show that it's really on top of the fulcrum. So I'm going to do this calculation first. It looks more complicated than the others, but it's only a one-step thing. So while the others take several steps, you will see that, appreciate that later when I do other things. Okay, so here's what I'm going to type. I'm going to type it exactly the way it is down here on the calculator. So I open parentheses, and then I'm going to do 216 times negative 36.5, just like it says here. So 216 times negative 36.5, and then there's a plus. So then it's 516 times plus, times 15.5. So 516, one, I tried to use my keyboard, that didn't work. 516 times 15.5. And I'm gonna cut this short here because I don't wanna bore you too much with me plugging in the numbers because it seems to take quite a while. Okay, I guess while I'm talking, I will still do that. But the next time I will actually type it while I'm off screen. So divide by the total mass here. Notice that I put a 0, 0.0 here, which of course gives me zero torque from the um, meter stick, but I still put it into the equation because that's what it says. Divide by the total mass. So 216 plus 516 plus 125 goes the meter stick is still there, and I come up with 0.133. I will round it to just one significant figure, so 0.1 centimeter. So it's a millimeter, 0.1 centimeter, so I'm really close to zero. And we can see this thing here is balanced. So that makes sense that my center of mass is really close to 0, 0.0, which is right here where the fulcrum is. Okay, let's do the torques. Again, I'm going to follow this one here, which says... Lever arm times negative mass times gravity. 
So left arm is negative 36.5 times parentheses. Negative, because it says negative here in the equation, 216. That second negative comes in because I need to turn the torque around because the torque on the left-hand side is counterclockwise, and by definition, that's actually a positive. That's where the second negative comes from. So 216 times 9.8 gravity, parentheses, and that's the torque, except this is in centimeters and this is in grams. So over here it says, because of that, I have to divide by 100 and 1,000 in order to get it to the proper unit. So divide by 100 and divide by 1,000 in order to change it from grams to kilograms and centimeters to meters. And now we're going to have it in Newton meters. I'm going to use all the digits here. So 0.772 right here. 772632. There we go. And now I'm going to do the next one here on the side and just present what I have on the calculator. Because it'll save us some time. You don't have to watch me type here. So I did 15.5 right here times that negative again here, 516 times gravity 9.8. By the way, the G and the G are not the same. 516 grams. This one is G, acceleration due to gravity, 9.8. All right, and hit enter. And I come up with this. And then I divide, as I said earlier, by 100 and 1,000. At least I'm trying. There we go. And I come up with this. I'm going to jot that down. All right, point seven eight three eight zero four. There we go. So I entered the torques here, 0 0.7726632, plus the negative here, and then plus 0, 0, and so on. Hit enter, and yes, one torque is positive, the other one is negative. The two balance each other, and of course I do come up with not exactly 0 because it's a measurement. So my answer here is negative 0 0.011172. I really don't need these significant figures in the back, but we can see here that this one here in the front, at least, trying to just highlight the front here, right here, and it doesn't let me, doesn't let me. Just the point, uh, point zero 0.01, that's what I wanted to highlight, and it just didn't let me. So here, same thing here, I just wanted to highlight the point 0.78 and the point 0.77 compared to the point zero 0.01. These are really large, this one here is really small, total torque, net torque, which means, yeah, the thing is balanced. All right, this was the special case. So here we have the zero here being the fulcrum, and this is the special case that the meter stick also is at the fulcrum here, its middle, and therefore this one here is zero, zero. For all the others, that will not happen. So let's look at this one here. And what I did here, you can see the entire meter stick here, and the fulcrum is definitely not at the middle. Let's see, the middle is actually here, which means the fulcrum is something like 14, 15 centimeters um, away from the middle, and that's why I wrote down right here negative 14.2 centimeters, because we always have to measure from the fulcrum. The fulcrum is here, so the middle of the meter stick is to the left, hence the negative 14.2 this weight over here is to the left, so in the negative, negative 54.2, and the other one is to the right, so positive 25.8. Again, if we compare the lever arms and the masses, we can see the following. We can say that 54.2 or negative 54.2 compared to 25.8, that looks like almost this lever arm here is almost twice as much as the other one. Well, here, the other one, the weight is the opposite ratio this here is actually more than twice as much than the first mass here so the ratio is a little bit off but what happens now is that of course this torque right here will not equal this torque be in fact it's going to be less this torque is going to be less but the rod being the middle of the rod being on the same side or on the left or negative side aids this mass here so the two torques combined from this mass here and the rod over here 
ought to equal the torque on the other side. And that's what we're going to calculate. Again, I'm going to start with the center of mass equation, which should give me a nice zero or something really close to zero here. And again, the reason why I'm going to do that is because this is just one big wash here while all the others here, the torques, I actually have to do several steps in order to get there. So I'm going to type this one here, but I'm going to type it while I'm not recording so I don't bore you with me typing all these numbers here. So give me a moment. All right, and I'm back. I think that took me about a minute here, and I was able to focus on typing in the correct numbers. So again, when you look at these six numbers here, this is what I typed in according to this equation. So 216 grams times negative 54.2, that's the left mass, 516 times 25.8, that's the right mass, and then 125 times negative 14.2, that's the middle of the rod pulling on the left-hand side. All of that in parentheses, which is the numerator, divide by and then parentheses the three masses here in the denominator, hit enter, and I'm going to come up with a rounded negative 0.2 centimeters. So again, that one is really close to zero. And again, I'm going to do the torques here on the side, and then we'll present these to you. All right, I'm back. This took me quite a while to type everything in. So here what I'm doing is the negative 54.2 times the negative 216 times gravity 9.8 there it is hit enter this one is 114,000 but remember I have to divide by 101,000 so shift the decimal point six times no I'm sorry five times so I'm going to come up with 1.14730 newton meters which I already typed in all right next one so here again this lever arm times the negative this mass times 9.8 hit enter negative 130,465 newton meters again divide by 101,000 or shift the decimal point five times negative 1.30465 we can see that this one here is more than this one appreciably more about 16 percent actually but this is where the rod comes in so the rod one here is, this is the lever arm to the middle of the meter stick times the negative, here's the mass, times gravity 9.8. Hit enter, I'm going to come up with 17,000. Again, divide by 100,000. And again, I wrote it down here, comes out to 0 0.17395. And we can already see that this one here being a positive torque on the left-hand side Again, the lever arms are negative to the left side, but the torques actually come out to be positive because they have to be defined as counterclockwise torques are positive. You can look that up in physics materials. And we can see that here 0.17 plus the 1.14 is roughly 1.31, which is offsetting the negative torque on the other side almost perfectly. So let's add these three numbers which I typed in on the side, so I'm adding these three torques right here, positive, negative torque, positive torque, adding them all, hit enter, and I come up with 0 0.166. I'm sorry, point, was it 0 0.166, right? Yes, it is. All right, again, this one here is really close to zero, especially compared that I have torques of 1.14 and 1.30 here, and then I come up with one zero point zero one six so that's in the neighborhood of in fact kind of like half a percent or so that it's off all right so this these are the calculations that you then would have to do from the measured data that you get in the video all right so these are going to be the mass measurements for the mobile or is it a mobile or the German is mobile, so I will call it a mobile, which is usually done for babies. And usually we build one hanging on strings, but this time I will turn it around. I will actually balance it. You will see how it looks like when it's done. I thought I'd also be a little whimsical. I'm going to use these Smurfs here. I'm going to introduce them here in a moment. Each one of them is going to stand on some weights or masses, I should call these masses. Unfortunately, in catalogs, they're called weights. And this one here reads 100.1 grams, but I'm just gonna round it to the nearest um, 
integer because otherwise it just gets too accurate. I mean, this is a very accurate experiment and I think we can get away with just saying, hey, let's forget about the point something there for the grams. For the centimeters, we'll be using it. And then this one here would have 200 grams, 300 grams or a little bit more, 400 grams plus the Smurf, of course. Um, just a little mention on these ones here. These are also called weights and this is really the funniest one. They're, ca they're called one Newton. They're the same here, but they actually measured this, 102 grams, because they really are one Newton, but if I took them to the moon, they'd be useless, because gravity is different on the moon. Anyway, I guess far chance that I would ever take them to the moon. Anyway, so, so let's actually let's start out and taking the measurement. So I'm going to take the measurement of each of these objects and the three rods that they're going to be on instead of hanging. Again, they actually will be balanced across here, which, by the way, I haven't tried yet. So let's actually measure these here. So from left to right, I'm going to measure the injured football smurf. And in fact, I will call him Verletzter Fußballschlumpf. And again, I'm going to round this to 115 grams, which I fortunately already wrote down earlier. All right, this one here, Papa Smurf on there, and I will call him Großer Schlumpf, 214 grams. This one here, the sledding Smurf without a sled, I will call him Schlittenschlumpf. 319 grams rounded. I actually have to fix that here. There we go. And then this Smurf here who wanted to go swimming but then he's just lazy lying in the sun so I will call him Bade Schlumpf. 412 grams. And then so this is left to right, as you can see in the tables on the lab manual. Then for these two over here, I'm going to have this rod. So this rod, I believe, is called rod A. And this one here measures 55 grams. I will explain those red dots and orange and green later on. So let's see. This one here, this would be rod B. And that one is around it 191 grams. And then this one over here, that's actually really heavy. So I, on purpose, I chose three different ones. So this one comes out to 251 grams. I have to fix that too. Boy, I, and this is rod C. What did I read up earlier? Anyway. These are the seven masses that I need. All right, I'm ready to take the distance measurements or the level arms for the what is used to be called the lower left segment. It will still be called the left segment, but you will see that it's, because it's a mobile in reverse, it's a little bit different. Okay, let's see. Here I got a fulcrum, so I'm going to put it on here. Obviously, it balances in the middle. By the way, one of the red dots is in the middle here to signify where that is. And the other two are here because this is where I'm going to place the weights. Now, of course, this one here, I actually have to check the camera, see if that's all in the picture. Uh, actually, the Großer Schlumpf. It's a little bit outside of the picture. I think that's better. So, Großer Schlumpf is going to go here. This one is the 90 centimeter mark. This is the 10 centimeter mark. For me, just easy to remember. Now, what will become important, you will see in a moment, is that I will have to subtract quite a bit. So, if I'm going to place these on here, then of course the whole thing is not going to balance because Großer Schlumpf is a whole lot heavier. So I have to get the meter stick over here or the fulcrum over here. There we go. Wow, that was a pretty cool trick. And now it balances. By the way, as I said, I hadn't assembled it yet. What I forgot to pay attention to is that these meter sticks will sag. The next one is going to be worse. All right, so this is the fulcrum. This is what I call my zero. Everything that is being measured is measured from this zero. Now my zero is at 61.5 and 
großer Schlumpf. But did I say 60.5? That's what I meant. Yes. Which means, großer Schlumpf being at 90, the distance is 29.5. And großer Schlumpf is on the right hand side. So it's a positive 29.5 for his lever arm. The verletzter Fußballschlumpf is on the left here at 10, so to 60.5, at a lever arm distance of 50.5. But because he's on the left, it's a negative 50.5. Now, they are balanced, but notice that the meter stick itself is not in the middle here, because the middle is over here, and it has appreciable mass that it does make a difference. So, the middle being here, again, always measured from the fulcrum, is negative 10.5 from the fulcrum. So, negative 10.5 here for the middle of the meter stick, negative 50.5 centimeters for the Verletzter Fußballschlumpf, and positive 29.5 for the Großer Schlumpf. And if I misspoke, I hope I didn't, or will, I hope I won't, then it's in the lab manual as well. Okay, make a short pause here and then I'm going to go to the next one. Alright, actually before I go to the next one, let me just show what happens if I was to remove Großer Schlumpf here, but the weights are still on, and it's, it's alright, I guess he doesn't have enough mass. But obviously, if I remove one piece here, well, it, the, th the whole thing would fall apart. Or if I would was to shift these weights here this way or that way, then obviously the whole thing is going to get upset. Because in order for this here to be the center of mass, all the torques on the right-hand side and all the torques on the left-hand side have to equal out. And one more thing. Notice that, as I measured always from the fulcrum to Großer Schlumpf, Verletzter Fußball Schlumpf, in the middle of the meter stick, I didn't measure to the end, because there's nothing there. Yes, the meter stick is everywhere, but might as well just use the middle of the meter stick. So again, there is nothing to measure here, there's nothing to measure between these two guys. It's always from the fulcrum to the middle of the meter stick, because it does have appreciable weight, to one object over here and to the other object over there. And now I'm going to go on to the next one. All right, again, I have these marks here. So this is the middle of this rod. This here is where the body schlumpf is going to go. And this is where the sledding smurf, the schlitten schlumpf is going to go. So I'm going to place it here. And this is going to be tricky. I already know where it needs to be, so I'm just going to put it there because otherwise I only have two hands. I don't want it to fall apart on me. And this is the problem here that I hadn't paid attention, hadn't paid attention before I did this project that these meter sticks will sag quite a bit. So let's see. Wow! Okay. All right, I'm going to look in the camera here. I guess that looks okay. Do I actually have the Smurfs on there? I think I do. So. The fulcrum is at 54 centimeters, but again, that ought to be my zero. Now, the Badeschlumpf over here is therefore 36 centimeters away, and it's positive because he's to the right. Of course, remember that I said I put these markers here at 10 and 90, so I have to subtract 54 from 90, so positive 36 centimeters. The Schlittenschlumpf is at negative 44 centimeters and the rod is at negative 4 centimeters. The rod has enough mass, even though it's a small lever arm, it's not negligible. Notice that what would happen if I push this one slightly over here, well now the thing actually will actually start falling apart. So yes, the meter stick does add to it. All right. And as I said, this is sagging a lot. The next one will be a real challenge. 
All right, the final project didn't work out, so you can see that I have to cheat here and over there. This is perfectly fine. That's the fulcrum for the what is in a mobile mobile the top segment. In this case, it's the bottom segment actually. And the problem is when I remove these stacks here, then of course this meter stick is going to sag, and on top of these sagging here which means they're trying to slide off there. Now they're also going to try to slide off there and I just couldn't do it, obviously. This one is just sagging too much for that. So, yeah, I just, I just cannot do it um, this way without the sagging. So in any case, if this was perfectly fine, then the fulcrum would be at 64 centimeters. And that would mean that to this meter stick, which is balanced here at 90 centimeters, we have a positive 26 centimeters, always from the fulcrum. And you can see that here, this former fulcrum here needs to be right here, respectively. This is its fulcrum. And then over there on the other side, you can see that too. What used to be the fulcrum still is over there. In any case, that one over there is now at a distance of 54, negative 54 centimeters and the middle of the rod, this is a pretty heavy rod, this one here is a meter stick, this one here is negative 14 centimeters. So these are the measurements that you need for what is called the top segment and then of course you need the total mass over here and the total mass over there and of course the rod here and you determine what the center of mass is and what the torques are and of course we come across that in machinery that we have to determine where the center of mass of things are is and what kind of torques are working on the different machine parts in order to make things work. And this is just a static model. Um, as I said, the mobile actually is working better, but I like this idea. Um, when with one little exception, it actually worked out pretty well and I had quite some fun doing this one here. By the way, this is the very last experiment that I'm taping among the 14 or 15 that we have in this class. I didn't do them all in order, so this is the very last one. All right, I'm no slouch, right? So I figure it out, of course. The solution is taping it to these ends. And so we can see that there that sits nicely on its fulcrum. This was the left side, correct? Notice actually it's not bending that much. That's because the lever arm is relatively short and it's of course rigid. Well, actually surprisingly, it's this one here that bends the most even though it has much less mass than the other side but it's just the lever arm with its rigidity that is actually bending more and yes because of the tape I was able to remove these stacks that I used yesterday actually when I filmed it these stacks of cubes that were supporting it so right now everything is balanced left side over there right side over here and then this is what would be called the top segment. And there you go.